Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be doing yet another, can you guys believe it, another video involving the $5 Windows 98 PC. But today's one is going to be a little bit different because we're not really going to be taking a look at any sort of operating system or, or anything like that. What we're going to actually be doing is uh, a project that I've been wanting to do for a while. And that is actually uh, trying to back up the hard drive in this computer onto a USB flash drive. Uh, you guys, if you're any sort of a regular viewer of this channel you probably know that I do a lot of videos involving this computer I install a, a lot of different operating systems on here so I'm constantly kind of having to reinstall Windows 98 whenever I want to do something with Windows 98 related and uh, I would really like it if I could just instead of having to go through that whole setup process and now since we have the drivers installed on here for the wireless card instead of having to go through that whole process every time I want to reinstall Windows 98 if I could just pop in a USB flash drive and restore everything on here to the hard drive and be up and running uh, much, much faster. So I actually got a few comments about this from some of you guys saying you should do this and uh, I've actually been wanting to do it for a while but we're going to actually be taking a look at a pretty cool piece of software uh, called Clonezilla in this video and Clonezilla is a free um, piece of software it's actually based off of uh, Debian Linux and what it allows you to do is you, you basically boot off of the CD and you're able to boot into an environment where you can uh, have Clonezilla save uh, the contents of your hard drive, basically an entire image of your hard drive and clone it over to another drive, or in this case, we're going to be trying it with a USB flash drive. And since this is a bootable CD, we're just going to go ahead and actually shut down the system, we're actually just going to restart and uh, boot right off the CD and get into this process. So we are loading up here and uh, it should recognize the uh, CD drive and have us boot from that so I can hear it. Uh, there we go. So here is the Clonezilla menu. Um, now, Clonezilla only needs, I, th I believe, 192 megabytes of RAM to work properly, and I think that is very close, if not exactly, uh, how much RAM that this computer has. So we're just going to go with the default settings, uh, 800 by 600. We're going to uh, load into that. Undefined video mode number 314. Press enter to see video modes available. And looks like we've got a kernel panic. Okay, that's... Uh, reassuring. We'll go ahead and force shut down here. <laughs> um, okay, so instead we're going to go to other modes of Clonezilla and we're going to go with the failsafe mode. Alright, so long story short, it turns out that uh, that CD that I burned uh, when I actually tried to load Clonezilla, as you guys probably saw, actually resulted in a kernel panic. Um, and I, I tried uh, a couple of different methods of actually booting it, even going into the fail-safe mode, which is kind of like the last resort, and uh, it still did the exact same thing. So I was uh, thinking of what to do next, and then I actually discovered that Hiron's boot CD, which I have a copy of right here, actually contains a copy of Parted Magic, which has a copy of Clonezilla. So we're going to try to boot from Hiron's boot CD. I did it in a VM on my host computer, and it worked totally fine. Uh, so we're going to see if the 98 PC can boot into Clonezilla. So here we go, we're at the Hiron's Boot CD menu and we're going to go right down to the Linux based rescue environment. And instead of actually starting the environment, because uh, this computer, since it does have a very low amount of RAM, it actually does not uh, work in the standard mode. So we could boot into the uh, low RAM settings, which basically just loads Gparted and that's it. Um, but what we can actually do is go down here, I think at the very bottom of this list, uh, yep, there's Clonezilla right there. So we're going to press enter on Clonezilla and uh, we're going to start. And now, uh, if everything works, uh, we should be able to actually load into Clonezilla. Now, Clonezilla itself is completely text-based, so uh, the computer doesn't need to really have a lot of RAM to load, like a graphical, you know, user interface or anything like that. Uh, this is definitely looking much better than uh, the previous, you know, method looked. Uh, it's actually going through the uh, boot up process right here. All right, so it actually didn't work exactly like it did in the VM, but as you can see right here, that's just because that uh, it says to run from RAM, parted magic must have at least 298 megs available, but only 182 megabytes was detected. So it wants us to uh, select a live option from the menu. I do see what it's saying. It's just basically saying that it, it can't boot from you know RAM because there's not enough RAM to store everything. So it says you have to boot from the live CD option. Yeah, this right here is the one that I usually go into, but you see it says G parted and TWM are the only programs started by default. Um, so we might have to do this and then kind of 
exit out to the command line and then you know run clonezilla from there yeah this is definitely one of the downsides of using hirons on a computer with such a low amount of memory um honestly what i could do and this is not really what i want to do but if i had to and i just wasn't able to get the program to work i could literally take the hard drive from this computer out put it into another machine run clonezilla on that machine and then clone it and then put the hard drive back in here but that's going to kind of um defeat the whole purpose of why I'm doing this because then I'm going to have to take the hard drive out of this machine every single time I want to re, you know, install Windows on it, you know, to uh, restore it from this USB drive. I guess that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but I, I just kind of want to keep everything in, in, in this computer. So we're going to try that to see if, you know, through this method here, we can actually get uh, Clonezilla to work. But if I try a bunch of things and it just doesn't work, then I guess we might have to actually literally take this drive out of here and just put it into another computer. Uh, that has more RAM. Um, but since this is loading off the live CD and, it, and I chose the low RAM option, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Okay, so we're actually logging into Parted Magic right now, so that is a great sign. All right, so here's actually Gparted loading up right now, um, which is not what I want to actually start. So what we're going to do is actually uh, launch Xterm here and see if we can just launch Clonezilla from there, because I believe you can launch it from the command line. You can kill Gparted here. I mean, we can like... There, now G parted. Oh, I guess that just killed the entire thing. Backup and okay, here we go. Backup and restore disk partitions. This should be Clonezilla. Okay, no, this is something completely different. This is partition image 0 0.6.8. I think I just need to get more RAM for this computer, but the thing is, I don't even know if it can, like, I don't know what the maximum this motherboard can support. I would think it would support more than 192 megs of RAM, but you know what? Maybe we should try that. I've got a ton of RAM laying around. I literally, let's just see if we can upgrade the RAM, because this is going to do the exact same thing. Only 182 megs was detected. You know what? I'm just going to look at that, because we've had so many issues with this computer, mainly just, well, not so many issues, but trying to boot off of Hirons is, is a pain, because there's not enough memory. So let's see um, if we can actually upgrade the RAM in this thing. All right, so good news, everybody. Um, I think we can actually upgrade the RAM in this thing. So I have verified a couple of things, actually, that I want to briefly show you guys. Number one, I verified that the exact model number of this computer is the Gateway Essential 433C. And according to uh, this website that I pulled up here, it says that this computer can work with up to 256 megabytes of RAM and it says that it had a fixed amount of 128 megabytes installed. Um, now what's interesting is I guess this was either bought with an upgrade or somebody did an upgrade because yes it does have uh, one stick of NEC 128 megabytes of RAM. It's got one stick in there but it also had this other stick of 64 megabytes of RAM. Um, both of these are PC, there are 100 megahertz sticks. And so I just looked in my giant box of RAM that I have here, and believe it or not, I found one stick of 256 megabyte um, PC-133 memory. So what we're gonna be doing is putting this one stick into this computer, and we're going to retire the 128 stick and the 64 stick into the box of RAM for now. Uh, to use at another time. There we go, 256 megabytes of system RAM. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Okay, so this system is now maxed out. Uh, we've got the maximum amount of memory that this thing can support. So now we're gonna boot into the Linux-based rescue environment. We're going to go all the way down to Clonezilla and we're going to start Clonezilla. And now, since we have enough memory, there should be no problem. We should be able to boot into it just fine. Well, never mind. It wasn't as close as I thought because it actually needs 298 megabytes and it only is detecting 245 megabytes. You know what? I honestly think, I wonder if Clonezilla will work now, now that it's got more memory. I mean, I don't know why it wasn't working before. Um, it wasn't really, it was kernel panicking. Now that it has more memory, maybe we can try to just load Clonezilla off the dedicated CD that we have here. All right, there we go. So we're going to go with the let's actually go to other modes because instead of going 800 by 600 let's do 640 by uh 480 just to kind of have a lower resolution here all right guys hold the phone once again because we actually got it to boot up um basically what happened is i um when i actually you know press enter to boot um and you know choose that uh, alternate display mode it actually like looked like it was hanging because it was like on a screen and it wasn't doing anything but it was still um 
reading files from the CD drive, but it did that for about five to seven minutes, literally. I was on my computer about to download another version of Parted Magic um, that should have Clonezilla on it. I was just going to try to boot from that directly instead of going through Hirons. Um, but I turned around and I saw that it actually loaded up here. So we're going to see if we can actually... Um, you know, go through this process here. So we're going to keep the US keyboard layout. Okay, so we're going to start Clonezilla. So I guess this just had to do with the memory. I, I, I guess the reason why it was kernel panicking before is because it didn't have enough memory. So on this option right here, you basically have um, the option to use images, which is number one here. You can clone or restore a disk or partition using an image. Or the option two, which is device device, is disk to disk or partition to partition clone slash restore, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to go with device device. Um, which is it says worked directly from a disk or partition. Now this computer is, is I'm pretty sure only uses like USB like 1.0, um, maybe 1.1. So it's probably gonna be very, very slow actually, you know, cloning this drive. So we're gonna go with beginner mode once again. We're going to do local partition to local partition. Well, we'll see, first it says excluding busy partition or disk, which I would think means, oh, the USB drive, it's, it's, it's just not, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to read from it, but it's not, successful so it's just going to skip it and exclude it but now it looks like it's getting dev sda1 and sdb1 so i don't know if partition number two means there's two partitions or if it's reading from partition number two it might mean that it's two partitions which is exactly what we want because there's only one partition on the hard drive which is the two gig Windows 98 partition. Oh my gosh, it found it. It found it. Okay. So you see we've got the 2 gig partition. That's the gateway one right there. And then we have the 7.5 gig uh, Memorex Swivel, which is the name of the USB drive. So local partition is source. So this is the one that, um, you know, that we're going to choose as the source. So we're going to choose the 2 gig gateway partition. That's going to be the source. And then the USB drive is going to be the destination. Well, at least it actually loads up. So now I know that using this version of Clonezilla directly off the CD, that it's able to find the hard drive and the USB drive. So if we're able to get this to work, then there should be no reason why doing it in the reverse and choosing the 7.5 gig as the source. So it says excluding busy partition once again. So I guess there's a partition that it's finding that is busy. I don't know. I don't know what other partition would be on this computer because there's only the one on the hard drive and the one on the USB drive. Maybe the CD that it's loading from? Like, I don't know. Oh, now it's only found partition number one, which I guess is since we chose uh, that as the source partition. Yep, SDB1. So that is the uh, drive, the uh, USB drive. So it's, it's probably just automatically uh, excluding the SDA1 partition, which is the source again, since we chose it as the source partition, which is definitely helpful, you know, kind of a, you know, precaution in place. So you don't accidentally choose the same drive and you just end up cloning the same thing. So this is the target. All data on the partition will be lost and replaced. Perfect. We want that one right there. The only one that's on the screen, which is again the USB stick. Okay, so right now it's asking us if you want to add some extra parameters. So it says set the advanced parameters, multiple choices available. If you have no idea, keep the default value and don't change anything. So the default value is skip checking slash repairing source file system. We're not going to really worry about it because I know that this file system, I mean, this is like a, a fresh install of uh, Windows 98 and I know that this hard drive is in good shape. So we're just going to skip checking and we're going to skip repairing, uh, which is the default option. And uh, then it says the action to perform when everything is finished. We're just going to choose actually, so it'll give us an option to choose. So we'll just do that. So if you wanted like to run this and just kind of like go and do something else, you could have it say, okay, once it's done, power off, or once it's done, reboot. So what this actually does, and one of the nice things about Clonezilla is it is a command line tool. So it says next time you can just run this command directly. So you can boot into a you know command prompt or at least you know load Clonezilla and just go to the command prompt and type out this partition. What this installer does is it basically creates by all the options that you select it just creates this command and then you just basically run that so it just makes it much easier if you didn't really know what all those commands did and what all these parameters were so now uh, it should begin to clone the partition which this is going to be so awesome I mean this has been something I've been wanting to do like I said for a while I mean because every time I take a look at some Linux distro on here I always have to end up reinstalling Windows 98 um, so it's, it's just really nice that now I don't got to go through that and I'm basically taking a image of this hard drive 
that has everything on it, all the drivers installed, and now I can just have a backup of that, and whenever I install a Linux distro or do something on this computer, and I want to set it back to Windows 98, I just pop in that USB drive, load Clonezilla, and, you know, set all the options up, and we're off to the races. Um, you know, without any user input. It's, it's basically what I'm trying to do is just make this automated for myself here. Um, I'm going to probably do most of this stuff off camera. I mean, I could do a video of like restoring it if you guys wanted to see that whole process, but it's basically just the same thing, but just I'm selecting the USB drive and then choosing the hard drive as the, the destination. Okay, so it says, warning, warning, warning. The existing data in this hard drive will be overwritten. So it's saying it's going to overwrite the um, Memorex, you know, swivel drive. So we're gonna say yes, because it's going to overwrite everything. And then it says, let me ask you again. The existing data in this hard disk slash partition will be overwritten. All existing data will be lost. SDB1, which is the USB drive. Yes, we wanna continue. Okay, let's do it. So that's nice, it actually asks you two times in case you say yes, but you really want to say no. So right now it's just going to start its cloning process. So I might leave this on. Um, I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take. It's probably going to take a decent amount of time since this is a USB like 1.0 drive, but I could leave the camera on and kind of have like a time lapse, you know, kind of speed this up and just show you guys everything. Before we jump into that process though, I want to briefly tell you guys about this video's sponsor, Hostinger. Hostinger is an affordable website hosting provider with features designed to make managing your website extremely easy, even if you don't know anything about web design or HTML. They also offer domain registration, and some of their hosting plans even include a free domain for the first year. Their custom H panel lets you get quick access to your account information and provides quick links to some of the most used features. One of my favorites is the auto installer. This allows you to easily install a wide variety of software on your website. I recently used this feature to set up a new WordPress site for my YouTube channel at michaelmjd.com. Instead of dealing with manually copying files to my web server and creating MySQL databases, all I had to do was fill out a small form and press install. It's that simple. Hostinger offers multiple hosting packages to suit your budget. Their pricing starts at just 99 cents per month if you make a four-year commitment. So if you're interested in trying out Hostinger today, click the link in this video's description and use my coupon code MICHAELMJD at checkout to get 15% off a yearly web hosting plan. Alright, so let's get back to our time lapse. Here's the entire process sped up to about 4,000%. Alright guys, well, I've got some great news. Um, the cloning process actually finished, actually took uh, way less time than I thought it was going to take, but it was only a 2 gig partition that I had to clone. It took about uh, 15 minutes. Um, and uh, I went ahead and just booted into the command prompt, as you can see here, and I went ahead and actually removed the USB drive from this computer, plugged it into my host computer, and there is a full install of Windows 98 right on this drive. Everything was cloned successfully. Uh, all the files are there. It is just wonderful. So there you have it, guys. That was the much longer than I thought uh, process of actually using Clonezilla to uh, clone the Windows 98 PC's hard drive over to a USB drive that we can now use as a backup when I install uh, Linux or you know some other OS on here to actually show you guys. I can just very easily uh, plug this back into this computer, launch Clonezilla, and we'll be able to be back up and running with Windows 98 in probably about 15 minutes, which is pretty awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already uh, to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And if you guys have any questions or comments for me or even video suggestions, be sure to leave those down below as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.